Hello and good evening from the Tullys on the Vestal Parkway. My name is Brooks Hill along with us here tonight on my right, your left here in the restaurant. And for our friends watching back home on YouTube is Black Bears head coach Brant Sherwood. And coach, it feels like last Wednesday was about a month ago. Uh, I, <laughs> at least for me, it was a lot of talking in five days uh, just on the broadcasting side. I can't imagine what it was like for you and the players, you know, down at ice level. But uh, four games and five nights and the Black Bears come away with a possible 11 out or excuse me 11 out of the possible uh, 12 points so pretty nifty uh getting yourself out of the little bit of the uh slump that the black bears were in you know playing good hockey now going into the last season of uh the 56 game schedule yeah that's exactly where we want to be heading into playoffs um but yeah that you know Honestly, the past month has been a little bit of a blur. It's uh, been dragging along uh, quite a bit, and especially for the guys, but their uh, resilience and the way they've stepped up and not complained and uh, showed no excuses has it, been great. It's just uh, I think me and you have had a lot of cough drops uh, lately to yeah. – a lot you know, of, hold our voices uh, together. A lot of, a lot of coffee runs, a um, lot of liquids <laughs> uh, being used, whether that's water, Gatorade, or uh, Red you know, Bull. This, Pepsi. Team, this yeah. team runs on Red Bull. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, shout out Dylan for getting the Red Bull always <laughs> for us. And uh, I've come to realize here this little stretch before, you know, some teams are eliminated and go into the playoffs in the postseason, and you're only looking at playing one team a week at a time that you have game days and you have office days. And that's really the way it is for, I think, a lot of people uh, working upstairs that it's blurring together a little bit. Like some days uh, your body just automatically wakes up. It's like, oh, look, time to go to, like, time to, go to the office. And yeah. It's like, actually, hey, no, like we're in the hotel in Michigan and uh, I can sleep in a couple more hours. But um, what do you think it's been like? here these uh these last five days you brought in a lot of you know rookie collegiate players got some people back from the sp as well everyone's right around the threshold of hitting their eligibility for the postseason we got i think one person left if my stats were correct uh about that and uh i'm, I'm very ahead. i'm very happy with the t way uh the team's match in especially after this week you know we we had that skid there but um, I, I really feel like we solidified our top six, and um, things are rolling. And uh, and then the game on Sunday just gives you a, a strong example that um, we we have the reassurance that players can step in and, and play, and that's that's what's going to need to happen because uh, we kind of ran into that problem last year of uh, guys getting injured in playoffs or yeah. possibly suspension, and then maybe not having the bodies come in and step up and do the same job. So, um, yeah, all hands on deck. Everyone's uh, contributing, and uh, we're, we're very excited uh, down the stretch here. Do you feel more confident now in this team than maybe what you felt three months ago before, you know, the rookie juniors and rookie collegiate players came in? I do. I do. Um, I think there were a couple missing pieces, and we, we were making do with it. But um, now that we kind of have this bolstered lineup, um, yeah, I, I'm very confident going into playoffs, and uh, we, we have high, high expectations. I think uh, we've had those same expectations all year. It's just uh, a matter of uh, staying concentrated, staying focused, and not getting too far ahead of ourselves, just day by day, doing the same thing, same routine. Um, eliminating those distractions and uh, making sure we're just focused on hockey. Well, one of the questions that we got earlier today uh, for the show tonight, Binghamton already knows they're going to be the number one seed in the Empire. They're going to have home ice at least until the Commissioner's Cup final, and they could still have it if Columbus is not there and Binghamton advances. Is there anybody or people want to know, would you rather play Watertown or Elmira in the playoffs? Um, no preference here. Um, it yeah, it, re it really doesn't matter to me. You can try to weigh the teams against each other. I think they both have uh, some upside. Um, Elmira, they're like our little brother, and they play their championship game against us every single time. So they're going to put their best, uh, best foot forward, and then – for Watertown, um, their forwards are they, – they jump off the page to me. Tate Leeson, Trevor Lord, um, 
Mercurio, there there's some fast guys that can uh, really threaten us off the rush. So um, either either or doesn't really matter to me. I think there's a lot of back and forth in our locker room who who we'd rather play, but um, ultimately it just comes down to us. Do you kind of have to nip that in the bud when you hear players talking about that around the room? No, no, it's uh, just regular banter. Um, I I think these guys are. You know, they want to see who they're playing, so then uh, we make sure we're prepared against them. And um, it's, yeah, it is what it is. Whoever we're matched up against, uh, I, I expect our uh, our best effort. Well, you guys put forth a uh, really great effort this weekend, you know, sweeping, uh, going to overtime on a Sunday game after you guys had to travel through the eclipse traffic into the North Country Everybody and their brother, you know, stopping on the side of the road, things like that. And, you know, played a tightly contested hockey game with Watertown. And I was looking back on the stats, and I, you were talking with Cole on the broadcast about it. Like, playing in Watertown has been the most difficult thing for the Black Bears this season. Three of the ten regulation losses have come up at the Municipal Arena. And you guys are able to, you know, get that overtime winner, you know, battle some resiliency, late goal in the third period, tie the game up. Things like that. It looked like you guys really weren't unbothered by it at all. Yeah, and uh, turning their brain on to play because there was, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of delays in the travel. And um, obviously, I wasn't there for them uh, to to start the game. Um, had some uh, wedding things to attend to that afternoon, so I showed up uh, probably midway through the first, and uh, we did, we turned it around on the power play, and the guys stuck with it. But ultimately, I think Connor McAnonima. Uh, stood on his head that game, and uh, we salvaged a win and battled through overtime, didn't ride the highs and lows too much, kept it even keel, and sometimes you need to win that way, and it was awesome to finally get an overtime win. That's all I asked the guys before the start of overtime. Uh, let's please just get one of these this year so then we can see us win in every single way. So it was uh, it was pretty cool to get the, the OT dub. Yeah, so as Coach said, that is the first three-on-three three victory uh, this year for the Black Bears. They have two wins in the shootout, uh, one against Watertown and one against Danbury earlier this season. But now, as he said, they have won in every facet of the game, um, regulation time, a lot of times, twice in the shootout, now once in regulation. And that overtime victory was the 37th of the season. That is a new franchise record and still with two games left to go. So you guys continue to add on to the history books. Earlier this year, Connor Smith scored uh, four goals in a game. That hadn't been done before by a single by, uh, black bear. Um, and you guys keep on trekking along, chasing down the hat trick record uh, for most three goal games in a season uh, for Binghamton as well. Winning the division, going to hang a banner for the first time as an FPHL club here, and they're going to put that up in the arena. I know you talked about that at length last time we were here at Tully's because last time we were here that hadn't happened yet. So I'll talk about that. Like, What does winning the division solidify not only for you as a coach but for the Black Bears as an organization? It, it just shows that we took over the North, and it, I think it's very cool because uh, – <clears throat> for the past few years, it's been uh, kind of all Danbury, and uh, that that series we we really took it to them this season. So it's something to uh, you know hang your hat on, and the I couldn't I couldn't be more proud of the boys the way they've they've stepped up and in, uh, in our competitive division and showed up every single night, no matter who they're playing. Um, they they take the game seriously and they want to win every single time. Absolutely, you know, big win. Uh, in a different way, Friday night against Danbury, two different ends of the spectrum. Yeah. I was talking about it uh, with Cole on the postgame show Saturday night. Friday night, you have a you know nail biting two to one game, and you know probably when it was one to one, it's like whoever scores the next goal is probably going to win this game. Saturday, Hall of Fame night, big long induction ceremony, Whalers jerseys, all the distractions in the world going around, and then bam, it's a eight to one. You know, or seven to one, excuse me, like blowout. Two very different games playing against the sa same exact team. Yeah. So um, Saturday night, I I just wanted these guys to fo focus on their first couple of shifts, and they they sure did that by coming out of the gate scoring the way they did. 
But um, Friday night, um, I think chemistry was just a little bit off. Uh, maybe that's partly due to uh, my uh, decisions with the line combinations and stuff. But um, we, we found a way to get it done. Um, it just – it, it, it was an ugly win, but we, we did not play that well. And I know a lot of people liked that game because it was very intense. And um, it was gritty, and it, it was a little different. And we, we played a well uh, defensive zone uh, structure, and it, all that stuff's good. But it, it really wasn't our style game. And then we really got to see it on uh, Saturday night. It, it opened up. And we shut them down defensively as well. Uh, if, you know, they didn't get that power play goal, um, it, it could have been a shutout for Eggie. So, um, overall, just gutsy effort by everyone. It was uh, it was pretty special. And these guys, uh, they, they gain my trust more and more every day. So, um, it's, uh, it's going pretty well right now. Well, that's really good to hear. You know, we're getting ready to approach game 55. Uh, in 56 this weekend. Friday night will be inside the Danbury Ice Arena uh, at 7.30. We'll be live on Black Bears YouTube for that. And then Saturday is the regular season finale on April 13th. That's at 7 p.m. Uh, against the River Sharks at home. Since this is the last show of the regular season, I thought we'd you know, take a look back or maybe an overarching theme of the year. This is your first full season as the head coach of the Black Bears, you took over halfway through, led the team into the playoffs, won a playoff series, and then you do get bounced. You start from scratch right then and there during the summer of the offseason. I know we spoke at length during the summer months. We went to Chicago in the free agent camp together and then went training camp, and now here we are at the finish line of this year. Um, one, can you believe how fast it's gone? Because I can't. And then two... What is it that you're going to remember about these 56 games for the Black Bears and yourself? The people I'm working with, um, <clears throat> the, the the guys up in the front office, um, working with Andreas and the players uh, mostly. Like, uh, the, these are my guys. I, I love them. And, um, yeah, they're, I consider them all friends, and I'm just so happy that um, – I kind of went out on a limb by bringing in more college players and not kind of recycled federal league hockey players. And I didn't know if it was going to pay off, and it, it sure did. And this has been a successful uh, regular season. But um, ultimately, we, we want to win the championship, and anything kind of short of that will still be disappointing. So I just, like, I don't want to get too too far ahead of myself, but yeah, I am proud of uh, – the relationships that uh, we, we've created here. And we really got good people that care about the community, care about the fans, and uh, most of all, just care about each other. It, it's, a, it's a strong brotherhood in that locker room, and <clears throat> I love every single one of those guys. Very well said. When, um, when you were playing uh, in your pro days, what did it mean having a Titus locker room as what you, the players who have been on the show, what they say during the interviews, what does it mean when you have that brotherhood inside the doors? It just means that you, you have a friendship for a lifetime. Even if, like, you don't talk after the season, you might be you might end up in that city that uh, one of your buddies uh, that you played with lives, and you, you get to hit them up, and you might get to go to lunch together or something like that and grab a bite, but um, it just means those long-lasting uh, relationships, and it carries outside of hockey, whether it's, uh, you know, getting together with families or possibly even working together outside the hockey world. Um, it's just those connections that, that carry you on through. That's really awesome to hear. I know from uh, my playing days in lacrosse, right before uh, the pandemic started and we went home for spring break, you know, you kind of thinking like that was the last time they're like, hey, you know, the 40 of us are going to be together on that team. And no matter how many of us go to like reunions or things like that or, you know, move across the country, all 40 of us aren't going to be in the same spot again. So it's nice that you know that you have people spread out across the country in different locations and hockey really bringing people together. And that's not even like a country thing. That's a continent or, you know, across the world with how many like Europeans there are now playing the game. So it's really awesome to hear that. 
know, you guys are building connections and friendships for life while really, also trying they, to bring yeah, home. They, they really don't miss a beat. And when you, even if you don't see your buddy for a while and you, you run into him two or three years later, you, you still talk about the things that you remember that went on in that locker room. And it was, uh, it was just, it's pretty special. I, I still connect with the guys that I played with, whether it's uh, social media, uh, throwing out like a funny joke uh, on Instagram or whatever, or um, it, it's always uh, it's always connected, whether uh, you're you're far away or not. That's awesome. It's great that you know you, we have those tools to stay connected. It's not like uh, I would say like you and me growing up, where you have to call that landline just to like talk to somebody, <laughs> and then nowadays you got eight year olds walking around with cell phones and iPads and. No more knocking on the door asking nope. if you come outside and play. Yeah, ring yeah. the doorbell. Hey, you want to go play basketball? Oh, nope, can't. Got homework. Okay. And then they leave. So, yeah. man, those were the good old days. That was fun. Um, So, uh, I will let you go. I know you got a busy schedule getting it ready uh, for the games this weekend, Friday and Saturday. What are you looking for, the Black Bears here, to finish out the regular season before mm-hmm. we get into the postseason? We're just looking for a max effort. That's it. Um, not uh, nothing crazy. Just uh, kind of stay with it. But yeah, looking for a good road win on uh, on Friday, and then followed up with a nice uh, home victory on Saturday to lead into playoffs. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, Coach, thank you for your time tonight. As always, we appreciate <laughs> it, and we will talk to you for the Tully's Coaches Corner in the pregame interview on Friday night. Awesome. All right, that's the voice of head coach Brant Sherwood. We'll be right back after these messages in Black Bears forward. Kyle Steffen is going to join the show with us here tonight. So don't go anywhere, folks. More coming up after this. The Black Bears are home one more time in the regular season on Saturday, April 13th at 7 p.m. against the Elmira River Sharks. Get a preview of what the first round could look like and grab your tickets now at BinghamtonBlackBears.com. Experience the new way to watch your Black Bears play all season long at home and on the road, free on YouTube. Black Bear fans, it's now time for the Bricks Barber Company Clip of the Week. As every Friday night home game, uh oh, two for one beers. And speaking of two for one, Watertown comes in in a two pad stack by Nolan Egbert. Bridge Barber Company located in the number five comments at 41 South Washington Street right here in downtown Binghamton. Give them a visit today. are home one more time in the regular season on Saturday, April 13th at 7 p.m. against the Elmira River Sharks. Get a preview of what the first round could look like and grab your tickets now at BinghamtonBlackBears.com. Experience the new way to watch your Black Bears play all season long at home and on the road free on YouTube. Black Bear fans, it's now time for the Bricks Barber Company Clip of the Week. Every Friday night home game. Uh oh. Two for one beers. And speaking of two for one, Watertown comes in in a two pad stack by Nolan Egbert. Bridge Barber Company located in the number five comments at 41 South Washington Street, right here in downtown Binghamton. Give them a visit today.
The Black Bears are home one more time in the Welcome back in, folks, and the Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. Time for our very special player interview here live at Tully's on the Vestal Parkway. It's Black Bears for Kyle Steffen joining the show with us here tonight. One of the newer members of the Black Bears making his first time appearance here at the Coach's Show tonight, and we're very gracious that he's spending some time with us here on Tuesday night. Kyle, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brooks. I appreciate that. Oh, no problem at all. So... You have played 15 games with the Black Bears this season, joined on you know, a little bit towards the tail end of the year, but we're getting ready to get into uh, the meat and the bones of the season, meat, or meat and potatoes of the season, I should say, being the postseason. Uh, the playoffs coming right around the corner for the Black Bears. What's it been like you uh, getting a part or getting to be a part of this organization? Well, I had heard this coming in. I knew Jesse Anderson prior to, to getting here, and um, all I had heard from him was fantastic things just about the city, about the crowd, um, the support that we uh, we get here. And, and showing up and seeing it firsthand, I mean, he's 100% right. Like, uh, the support system, the support network we have here truly is unmatched in comparison to anything at, at, at any level I've played at. Um, and certainly, you know, even in the pro circuits, this is this is elite um, in terms of uh, the facilities, the fan base, the whole nine. So, uh, very very special to be here, and really really pleased. So, well, we're glad that you're a part of it. You had an awesome goal on Saturday night. It was the second goal of the game that was within the first five minutes for the Black Bears, and it ended up being the game winning goal um, on a good takeaway. Uh, by the Black Bears, and you were just able to put it over the glove of the Dan, or excuse me, the blocker of the Danbury goalie. No, that got it felt good. What was it like for you and the rest of the guys wearing the old throwback Binghamton Whaler stuff on Saturday night? Did that feel good? Oh man, that was super cool. Uh, to to be able to wear those threads like that, uh, that logo, that historic franchise, everything about that was so so cool. Um, and then to be able to to auction them off at the end like that, to see the fans get on, their hands on them was. That was really special. Uh, it was a special night, as you said, special game for myself personally. Uh, and and Shirzy just made sure we, we had an emphasis on starting starting the game off right. Um, really focused on winning that first media, uh, that first five minutes for the fourth first media there. Um, and I thought we did a really good job of that. Uh, we were hard on the forecheck, making turnovers, and obviously that's that's how my goal came about. So. Um, yeah, fantastic start for us. You know, we've also seen you a lot this year on the penalty kill, a whole lot. You and uh, Tyson Kirkby out there together, um, you know, two of the guys with some bigger stature in the forward group uh, for Binghamton, and uh, seen you a lot in the uh, PK time slot. Is that something that you were doing back when you were in uh, AIC? Yeah, yeah, I played some, some, um, some special teams there, specifically on the PK side. Um, my coach in university was was always uh, making sure that we knew that, you know, if, I, if you're just a five on five player, uh, it's easy to get you out of the lineup. So to provide value for yourself, you've got to be able to be on the special teams, whether it's on one side of the puck or the other. Um, and when I came in here, I, I asked Jersey, said, hey, you know, like it's where are the where's some opportunity in the special teams? Uh, you know, it seemed like he's got his guys for the PP, um, the power play that uh, they're they had some some flow going so um, I wanted to make sure that uh, that if I wanted to, to create some value for myself as a player uh, I wanted to get on the special team so uh, I took a took a hard a hard look at the the PK and really wanted to fit in there um, you know it's all about work ethic having your stick in the right place and, and such like that so um, it's been very good playing with Kirkby's awesome he's he's extremely smart it's easy to read off him um, and then recently a little more with Fletch. I love the way he can skate and get in the lanes and stuff like that. So it's been, uh, it's been very fortunate that I've had some good players around me to help. Uh, but, yeah, the, the special teams on the PK side is something I've been pretty proud of. You know, speaking of uh, Josh Fletcher, I was talking about it up in the office, and I was like, I don't think he understands, like, slowing up and, you know, like letting his teammates catch up a little bit. I feel like it's always full, sp uh, full sprint, like full strides, Anytime he's on the ice and he can stop on a dime and, you know, change his direction, everything like that. But there's no coasting with him, at least the way that I see yeah. it from the press box. Yeah, yeah. He's a water bug, I like to call it. He's just he's quick. He's fast. He's got a lot of top end speed. But um, as you said, he's really quick. He's got those first three steps that he can separate with. Um, and it's fun to play with him. Yeah, he's a he's a fun player to watch. And it's great to uh, talk about him. Um, I was talking with my broadcasting mentor the other day, 
And, you know, I had heard a couple, like, years ago, read an article about sports broadcasting, and it's like, it doesn't really matter if the team's, you know, good or bad. Like, you, like you're like you still be able to, like, do the job, everything like that. And I was like, no, like, it's a lot easier when the team's doing good. Mm-hmm. You guys are flying around, scoring a lot of goals, making some great defensive plays, great saves from the netminders. Uh, you guys make it easy to talk about uh, because, God forbid, I'm – scraping the bottom of the barrel every night it's like you're almost dragging talking about it where i get excited every time we have a game to you know put a suit on put the headset on and you know talk for the next three hours about like what you guys are doing so it is pretty cool that you guys and that's certainly kudos to shirzy i mean he brought in he brought in the core group of guys that's allowed us to be successful um you know we're a very detailed oriented team uh i would say that we're we're more detailed than a lot of our competition. Uh, and that just goes to, to Shirzy's coaching. Um, you know, he's very, very particular. He lets you know if you don't do something right. He lets you know when you do do something right. Um, it's it, And details win championships, truthfully. So, Well, let's take a step into the time machine, go back a couple of years. You were playing with the Yellow Jackets at AIC, Correct, and that's NC. That's NCAA hockey, and that's yeah. Division One hockey, right? Correct. Yep. So you enrolled, I believe it was the fall of 2016. Correct. And four seasons there with yep. the Jackets as well. Yeah. What was that like? Because by my record, taking a look back at the stats, prepping for the show tonight, you're only the second Black Bears Division One player to come through the NCAA ranks. Um, the other one being Jeremy Forge from last year uh, as one of the goaltenders. So how did you get to AIC, and what led you to choose that particular school? Yeah, so I was uh, I was playing in a Canadian Juniors League in British Columbia, Canada. I was playing in the BCHL. Okay, I'm familiar. Um, okay, yeah, so I was playing for the Wenatchee uh, Wild, uh, who is now in the WHL. Uh, fantastic organization. Um, and so I was playing there, and I had, I had gone on a couple of recruiting visits uh, to some other schools. Uh, ended up going to AIC. Um, we had a we had a coaching change there and brought in um, a head coach from from Army, um, who was an alumni of AIC, and uh, he, when he came in and he, he had this uh, this new project this new plan of where AIC was going to go, um, it really appealed to me in terms of you know what he preached uh, in terms of similar to Jersey the details being primary, um, you know having a core group of guys. Um, you know, being emphasis on being good people, and then that sort of follows, trickles down into the hockey, uh, and so that really appealed to me. Uh, and then, and then just you know, scholarship money and whatnot uh, played into some factors as well. Just being Canadian, um, coming down to the U.S. for for school is significantly more expensive for us. Yeah. Um, so that uh, that had to work, or I was going to end up you know, just in Canada by nature of it. So uh, that ended up working in favor, and and uh, I got to spend some some great years there. It was. Actually, very similar to uh, to the core group that we have here. Uh, there really isn't anybody that we would call like a team cancer. There was nobody that was a cancer at AIC. There's nobody that's been a cancer here. Um, and when you have a good group of guys like that, we were able to we were able to win our Atlantic Division a couple times there in my my junior and senior years. So uh, I get the same feeling here. Um, when you got a when you got a, like a really good group of guys pulling on the same rope together, everybody's moving in the same direction. Um, that's how championships are won, you know, details and, and good guys. So, well, that was very thought out, and I didn't expect you to go on that much about AIC. That's really awesome that you guys were able to foster some great relationships, and you mm-hmm. see some comparisons here uh, between the Yellow Jackets and the Black Bears. Yeah. When did you graduate from? Was it May of? Was it May 2020? It was 2020. So we had just okay. gotten, we had just wanted birth to nationals. We were going to the, the Sweet 16, uh, and then COVID shut everything down. So kind of got robbed a little bit there, unfortunately. But it is what it is, the way the cookie crumbles. And, I mean, I, I know everybody in here and everybody listening has, has their own version of their COVID horror. So um, that just happened to be mine. Yep, I, I understand that completely. So um, hockey – you know, the NCAA basketball championship just wrapped up last night. UConn mm-hmm. beat Purdue. Yep. Everybody knows that they have, you know, 68 teams in that tournament. How yeah. many teams are playing for the NCAA hockey title? 
Yeah, so when you get to nationals, uh, there starts with 16. So Sweet 16 is the first round. Yeah. So there's six divisions. Um, and then if you win your division, you get a berth to nationals. And then the top 10 ranked teams also get a berth. Okay. And then they'll seed it depending on um, how everything ranks and whatnot falls into place. But, yeah, so there's 10 ranked teams and then six division winners. Okay, yeah, so six automatic qualifiers yep. and then 10 at large based yes. on their ranking in the correct. polls. Yep. Okay. Correct. All right. So you guys were going to go play in the national tournament. That's a whole – Yeah. That's, 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 a big, that's a big thing as well. Obviously, COVID started. It happened. And you kind of went away from hockey for a while. Mm-hmm. At least, you know, at the high competitive level, I would say. Yeah. So what were you doing from the time that you graduated from AIC to when you joined the Black Bears here uh, a couple months ago? Yeah, so during um, when, when COVID first sort of hit and everything sort of fell through, uh, I was kind of left without a hockey home uh, and just in terms of a team to go for. Uh, so I ended up actually getting recruited by a Japanese uh, technologies company called Kiants. Uh, they have a they have um, like a standing in the U.S. They have a they they predominantly do um, autom- um, like um, sorry automation equipment. So I was okay. working on the sensor di- sensor division. I was working with proximity uh, laser detectors oh. as well as uh, like ultrasonic flow meters and such. <laughs> So I was working. It was a it was a highly technical job. It was a great sales job, um, but coming from the world that we live in here, just in terms of the community and the surroundings, just even in in and amongst the locker room, I would say as a whole, you go from that team environment to the the sales role, which is a, a very I would say very isolated in, in terms of working on a team. You're dealing with people a lot. Yeah. Uh, but it's not the same as being in the room with the guys you know what i mean it's an in, it's an individual job absolutely okay um, and so I, I i got into that and um you know it was it wasn't something that i necessarily the actual work i didn't like because it was highly technical and you know i grew up riding motorcycles and working on them and stuff like that so okay. i have a bit of a i have a bit of a uh, tech technological savvy i guess i would say i'm not i'm i'm not proficient in any any stretch of the imagination but enough that i can uh, get onto the automo- automotive, predominantly automotive um, field, doing all the conveyor belt lines and such like that for all the automotive parts. Um, and I could get through, and, and I, I, like I said, it was it was a good job. It was um, it just wasn't necessarily for me. Um, I'm a very social person. I like to be able to conversate and, and have good people around me, and that was a very, as we spoke, a very isolated position. So, yeah. Were you... Working here in the states? Or were you working in Japan? Uh, no, so they have. Uh, they're they're a Japanese company, but they have a presence in Canada as well. Okay. Yeah. So All I right. was working in the Toronto area. Uh, okay. Just actually next to the airport. If anyone's ever been that way, uh, I was right in Mississauga. There's quite a bit of automotive manufacturing that goes on there. Um, so that was that was my territory, and and yeah, like I said, I uh, I didn't dislike it per se, but uh, having the opportunity to come here and do this with these guys. Um, win a championship and and it, and knowing that I'm was going to change fields eventually this wasn't my forever home so to speak was with that company so um, I knew that that was a chance and then this opportunity kind of arose as I stepped away from that so it kind of felt like it was uh, pre-planned predestined so to speak so um, when this cha- when this opportunity came up to come down here it wasn't even it wasn't even a question in my mind so did you find the black bears or did the black bears find you um, so I actually I put some pressure on Jesse Anderson. Um, him and I grew nice. up. Um, he uh, he's a few years younger than me, but uh, we grew up playing um, summer camps and stuff together. So okay. I would go to sleepaway hockey camp, and that's how we first met. And he actually lived he lived about a half an hour away, and so his dad had a boat, and so in the summertime we would go up and and go boating and and do stuff like that, play golf together. And so that friendship's just kind of cultivated through the years. And he's definitely one of my best buddies. And and so we were just kind of casually chatting about things. And and I I asked him, you know, like, hey, you know, I've still got boots. I've still, you know, I still play hockey. You know, do you think that there'd be any opportunity that that your coach might might want me to come down? And uh, one thing led to another. I talked to Scherzi and, and he said, yeah, I'll give you a shot. And I came down not expecting to be given anything. Uh, I was fighting for a role just like everybody else here. 
because the truth of the matter is you get to pro hockey, to get in the lineup means you're kicking somebody out, and that means you're taking somebody's job. So, um, yeah, we're all on the same team, but, but when practice comes, there is some competition because at the end of the day, like I said, you're playing for that job and you're playing so is somebody else. So um, I, I, I came in, wanted to be a good guy, wanted everyone to like me, but at the same time I wanted to take 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 a position away. I wanted to take some, some space uh, for myself and, and try and make a name for my fans here. Uh, do you think that you had some rust that you had to shake off from taking that time off while you were working in tech? Yeah. Um, like. Playing, I would say, you know, playing men's league hockey and then playing pro hockey, two different things. Yes. As much as people want to say, oh, like it's just single A hockey, yeah. they think they can get out there and do it themselves. What what was that like? It was a it was a shock for sure. The body, uh, the body wasn't happy. Uh, let's let's just put it that way. Um, but yeah, you, you 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 step out of like highly competitive hockey, and you realize that you you're not sprinting in real life the way that you do at, at this level. So, um, you know, you're playing men's league, guys are kind of making plays, stuff's happening, but nobody's going 100% for a puck. Nobody's back checking 100%. Um, you know, I, I was living out west. I was, I was skiing quite a bit, and that's more of a marathon sort of sport, I would say. If, if you're going out all day skiing big mountains like that, it's, it's, uh, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Uh, and coming back here, it was a, it was a big shock to the body, and and then just in terms of like the actual puck skills, um, stuff happens just that much faster. So all of a sudden, you're used to playing men's league. You got a second and a half. Now you have three quarters of a second, right? And and that, yeah. that time period just shrinks down, and every level you jump up, the time that you have drops even more. And and that just that's the rust that I feel like I noticed the most is just being able to handle the puck in traffic quickly. Um, making split-second decisions while there's traffic on you. Somebody's trying to run you over, trying to, you know, hit you really hard, and, and you got to be able to make a decision that's not going to end up in the back of your net. So, yeah, there's definitely some rush, but uh, some rust, sorry. Um, but 15 games is, is what I needed to play to be able to play playoffs, and um, having that buffer definitely was enough, I think, for me to be able to shake it off and start to feel my game again. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it's been fun. Would you say this is the same way that you were playing back when you were playing um, in college? Yeah, I, I was always, um, I was always sort of—I don't want to say an energy guy, but uh, if I'm skating well and I'm hitting well, that's normally when I'm playing my best. So I try and throw an emphasis on that because I can't necessarily control where the puck's going to bounce, but I can control if I'm going to follow through and and make a hit on the forecheck or make sure that I bring my butt back to to the own zone, make sure a back check's good, like. All those little things that are more of a decision and work ethic style, um, that's something that I was always took pride in. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, when you came to Binghamton, you didn't come alone. You brought a good friend who I got to meet the other day. Uh, tell everybody back at home about Zoe. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I've got a, I've got a three-year-old golden doodle. Um, she's, she's, uh, she's my sweetie. Um, she's the, I mean, you can ask the guys too. She's the sweetest dog, like doesn't bark, doesn't make a fuss. She's just the friendliest thing. Like I, I hope one day, um, you know, we get the green light and I can bring her in and, and the fans can meet her or maybe get a picture up like, uh, like Gouda there, uh, yeah. had a picture up, but yeah, she's, I mean, you can attest to it. She's the sweetest thing. So absolutely yeah. didn't say a word while I was in the locker room, uh, passing by you were lifting weights and also love Tucker to death you're in there in the weight room and Tucker's running around he wants to get up on you and uh give you a couple kisses while you're you know on the bench press yeah, things like yeah, that Zoe yeah. just minds her own business and stays out of the way yeah if you're laying down she'll she'll definitely come up and and give you a, give you a nuzzle give you a kiss so that's about the only thing you got to worry about yeah you're definitely in no worry to her uh Unless you're a squirrel or maybe a chipmunk, then you might need to worry a little bit. But okay. uh, other than that, she's she's just about as sweet as they come. Well, that's awesome. Well, uh, so something that has nothing to do with hockey, wanted to bring it up. Somebody had mentioned to me while they were watching the broadcast that your celebrity twin is Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Hold on. So you can take, yeah. take the hat off for all the people. And see if they're on YouTube, you can screenshot this. You're, you know, give them a little side shot, little, there you go. See, like that. 
I kind of see it, especially the new Jake Gyllenhaal movie on Amazon, the Roadhouse remake. Um, ha- and you had told me that you've actually heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How does that feel? That's I mean, a pretty good comparison. Yeah, you know what? If people are saying that you're looking like a pretty handsome movie star, that's probably a decent. That's probably a decent compliment. You're just gonna run with that. So, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna get my own way. I'll just, I'll just let the, the folks want to say I look like Jake Gyllenhaal. That's by all means. I've also, I also got told I look like a, a young uh, John Travolta. I've heard that before as well. Okay. So, young, young Johnny T. So uh, I can't say that uh, I see it myself. But uh, if I get the grease outfit on, I get the leather jacket and the whole nine, uh, it probably shows a little resemblance there. So, well, I mean, that, that's pretty good company to be associated yeah, yeah, with. Yeah, I'm not going to, like I said, no complaints here. Well, you know what? Maybe, uh, maybe you get the leather jacket and we'll have the photographers uh, <laughs> yeah. snap a picture on the way All into right. the next home game. Yeah, the next home. I'll get a, I'll get a, I'll get a tuxedo or a, uh, a turtleneck. I'll get the, the oh, leather jacket. Yeah. The chain. I'll, I'll yep. pop, the, uh, pop the collar for it and the whole nine. So... Yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, uh, Jake, I mean Kyle. Jake, <laughs> um, thank you for coming yeah, on. Appreciate it. Absolutely, great speaker. Looking forward to seeing you play here this weekend and in the playoffs as well. So thanks for spending some time with us here on Tuesday night, man. Yeah, thank you again, everybody. This is like I said, fantastic crowd, fantastic support. Um, hard to beat. So that's all you guys behind the camera there, uh, watching this, supporting us. So thank you again. Appreciate it. All right, that is the voice of Black Bears forward Kyle Steffen. We're going to take a final time app, wrap up the show, and send you off to enjoy the rest of your Tuesday night here live from Tully's. Back with you after this. The Black Bears are home one more time in the regular season on Saturday, April 13th at 7 p.m. against the Elmira River Sharks. Get a preview of what the first round could look like and grab your tickets now at BinghamtonBlackBears.com. Experience the new way to watch your Black Bears play all season long at home and on the road, free on YouTube. Black Bear fans, it's now time for the Bricks Barber Company Clip of the Week. As every Friday night home game. Uh oh. Two for one beers. And speaking of two for one, Watertown comes in in a two pad stack by Nolan Egbert. Bridge Barber Company located in the number five comments at 41 South Washington Street right here in downtown Binghamton. Give them a visit today. Bears are home one more time in the regular season on Saturday, April 13th at 7 p.m. against the Elmira River Sharks. Get a preview of what the first round could look like and grab your tickets now at BinghamtonBlackBears.com. Experience the new way to watch your Black Bears play all season long at home and on the road free on YouTube. Black Bear fans, it's now time for the Bricks Barber Company Clip of the Week. Every Friday night home game. Uh oh. Two for one beers. And speaking of two for one, Watertown comes in in a two pad stack by Nolan Egbert. Bridge Barber Company located in the number five comments at 41 South Washington Street, right here in downtown Binghamton. Give them a visit today.
My big thanks to head coach Brant Sherwood and Black Bears for Kyle Stefan for joining us here tonight on the Coaches Show. The Black Bears will be on the road Friday night from the Danbury Ice Arena. Puck drop is at 7.30. We'll be live with the Triple Cities Family Dental pregame show around 7.15 from the DIA. Black Bears' home regular season finale is on April 13th, Saturday at 7 p.m. against the Elmira River Sharks. Could be... A preview of what's to come in the postseason. The Binghamton Black Bears do not know their first-round opponent yet as Watertown and Elmira are still vying for the final spot in the 2024 Commissioner's Cup playoffs. It's going to come down to the absolute last game of the season for one of those two teams. If you haven't called the office yet to get your playoff tickets, you still have time, but they are going fast. 607-722-7367. And one of our ticket representatives will be able to get you some tickets for the playoffs. The first home playoff game will be on Saturday, April 20th at 7 p.m. No matter who the opponent is, Binghamton will start the playoffs on the road. Again, no matter who the opponent is on that Friday night, home Saturday, and if necessary, on Sunday. Want to give a very special shout out to some of our award winners that was announced uh, earlier today. Tyson Kirkby and Connor McAnanima were named to the Empire Division First Team All Stars uh, that the league announced today. So we're very excited for Tyson and Connor on that accomplishment. Be sure to be following the Black Bears on all of their social media to find out who else has won awards for the organization this season. Just a little hint. They're not done yet. They got a lot of days of announcements coming up. So make sure you're following the Black Bears on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter as well. And you're signed up for the email and text message alerts. Best way to stay informed on what the Black Bears are doing and stay up to date. So big shout out to our producers, Cole and Bobby tonight, helping us set up and will be helping us tear down as well, again, big thanks to Coach Sherwood and Kyle Steffen for joining us here on the show. It's been a great year here again at Tully's. We hope to see you at the arena on Saturday and hope you'll be watching on YouTube from the Danbury Ice Arena on Friday night. My name is Brooks Hill signing off. Thank you again for another great season of the Tully's Good Times with Coach Show, everybody.